Special Order 937. Ensure completion of podcast and viewing. All other considerations secretary. Oh, secretary. Let's try that again. All other considerations secondary. Podcast crew expendable. <laughs> Welcome back, audience. Welcome back to the One and a Half White Guys podcast, or more listed white guy opinions on movies for long. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. And today, audience, we have another special episode for you. That's right. I'm sure you could tell by the improved quality. We have a special guest on this episode. We have kidnapped someone and <laughs> forced them to use their camera. Someone has agreed us. to come back onto the podcast <laughs> and help us out. We're very excited to introduce Erica. What's up? Hi. From Erica's Pinball Journey, everybody. Yes. We're very excited to have her. We're going to be talking more in depth on the ch on her channel and pinball content that she creates. But for today, what we are going to be talking about is a special movie to both of us and a just recent viewing that Erica just had for this. If you got to see our watch through of the movie already that we've probably put out, thank you for watching that. And now we're here at the official review. We are reviewing Alien, 1979, Nick. This turns 45 this year. I, that means I'm not 45. Uh, <laughs> way older than me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, not way older, but yeah, it's, it's older than me. For sure. Arguably one of the most influential sci-fi movies ever to date. And we're very excited to be doing it on this episode. So should I introduce the movie? One of the scariest movies ever? Yeah, sure. All we'll right. Go ahead and talk about it, I guess. Here we go. We are doing Alien, released in 1979, directed by Ridley Scott, starring the warden from Holes as Ripley, uh, the war doctor as Kane, John Hurt. That's right. He was one of the doctors from the Doctor Who series for like one special, if you remember that. I thought you were going to say make a V for Vendetta reference. Oh, yeah. That's also, that is also him. <laughs> Harry Dean Stanton playing, I swear, the same role in every movie as, as Brett. <laughs> like he plays like a similar character in every movie i don't know what else he's in uh he's like pretty in pink that's it now he's in a couple others we'll get to that <laughs> and as brett and jonesy the cat as himself i actually think that is the cat's actual name no so they had a few cats play him i think four cats but i could not i went looking i was like what's his real name you know because i was like it can't be the real name of the cat but then they were like no it's just four cats and i go they all named just jonesy what are they called? Jonesy. Jonesy. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> no, what, what, what are each of their names? Jonesy. Jonesy. <laughs> we all are Jonesy, and Jonesy is one. Nick, would you like to lead us in with the IMDb summary? Yes. The crew of a commercial spacecraft encounters a deadly life form after investigating a mysterious transmission of unknown origin. Yeah, that was the movie. That was the movie. <laughs> <laughs> some, of these, some of these IMDb summaries we get are all over the place. I like the Jurassic Park one the most still. Well, There's also dinosaurs is basically what it says. And also dinosaurs at the end. Very good. Now I thought we could take <laughs> some time here and uh, get a little, a little bit more about our special guest, Erica. Thank you again for being on here. Very much appreciate it. So question I want to ask you, number one, uh, how do we know you? Uh, well, I know Nick first. Uh, we are friends and I worked on his thesis film and uh, Nathan, I've met you a few times. Nice. We'll review my sh my thesis film <laughs> together. <laughs> I did the sound on that. I'm not happy about that either. That's why you always wanted to do the sound for the podcast. You're like trying to right the wrongs <laughs> of the past. Fix it. Fix it, please. <laughs> what kind of type of content do you produce? Uh, I have a pinball YouTube channel and I make content about pinball. Um, yeah. Very cool. Nice. So uh, I'm a filmmaker by like career, right? That's like what I do for mm -hmm. a living sure. and uh, to work on movies and TV shows. So I have like, you know, a little bit of knowledge of things. And uh, I just uh, fell in love with pinball and I was like, wow, it'd be really nice to make some videos about this because I was looking for content online and really there it's uh, some slim picking sometimes like pinball doesn't have a lot of coverage and I didn't see a lot of, I guess, people like me making videos. So I thought, oh, how cool would it be to make content about pinball because this topic doesn't seem to get a lot of uh, love. That's very cool. Nice. I like that. And why are we doing Aliens specifically? What are, what's, what are we going to be doing on your channel? So on my channel, I thought it would be really cool to collab with you guys because I had never seen Alien. Until very recently. <laughs> Until very recently. Now I have watched it with you guys, which I'm super appreciative of. Yeah, um, thank you for watching. I don't know if that is that appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was glad we watched it in the morning because if I watched that at night, I don't know if I would have been able to sleep 
very easily afterwards. Um, but uh, yeah, watch the movie with you guys because I have played the pinball machine for Alien. Oh, no way. Yeah, and I know that the movie comes out this year. And I know, Nick, you've been trying to get me to watch Alien for like the longest time. So um, I figured, hey, guys, I want to make a movie versus the pin episode. You guys want to collab on that? So and then here we are. Yes, it was very, are. very excited for it. What do you think? I've been excited for this for a while, man, especially with the Alien Romulus coming out this week. Yeah. So is uh, it this week or this year? I'm blaming it. Oh, week. shit. Do it again. Sorry. <laughs> go again. It, that'd be cool if it was just like, dude, it's in theaters now. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why do you think I had us do it today? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, Nathan and I are very excited for Alien Romulus to come out this week, so that's why we're uh, giving you a bunch of Alien-related content, because we're big Alien fans. Of course. I, as you can see. Oh, show the Alien shirt. There you go. Perfect. Big fans. I got my queen here. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the, the stay, get away. F- what's, what's the it? bitch. <laughs> what is, stay away from you. But is it get away? Get away from her. You bitch. We already know when you first saw it, Erica. But the first big thing we want to say here. About a few hours ago. A few <laughs> little, little, little less than an hour ago, it seems yeah. like. So usually we go over our first experiences with the movie. We'll get to that. But. Your first viewing experience. What did you think? What was it like? <laughs> there's a there's a lot to take in from this movie. It it's really holds up, I think, actually, for coming out from 1979. Like, yeah, right on. I think yeah. that the production design and quality was actually really nice, and I liked the cinematic effects, and I was engaged, and I was scared. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, yeah, I liked it overall. Oh, you were scared, huh? What more can you ask for? <laughs> yeah. What was scary about it? Like the, the freaking alien. <laughs> I was scared of what they were scared of in the movie, the alien. <laughs> we'll actually get to who plays the alien, the guy that played the alien in the movie, uh, a little bit later. But absolutely, where? Uh, so, Nick, when did you first see this movie? I can't tell you when I first saw this okay. from start to finish, but I can tell you I was in fifth grade when I watched <laughs> the making of. Nice. Okay. <laughs> This is like Jurassic Park where you watch the making of that first and sure, you were like, it yeah. won't scare me. And then all of a sudden you still watch it. It's like, this is still scary. I want to watch this. I got to watch this making of again. Because yeah. even that like made me sleep in my parents' bed for the next two nights. Oh my God. Because they would show all the best jump scares. In it. Yeah, shit. <laughs> I got the movie spoiled for me. Yeah, I think I must have seen this sometime in high school when I was just going mm-hmm. through different movies. And eventually I, I stumbled upon this and I was like, okay. Because I was doing the Ridley Scott, so then it was like Blade Runner right after this that I watched, and I was like, whoa. And then, whoa, yeah. the sequel is so much better. <laughs> okay, let's calm down. But I remember watching this movie and being just enthralled with everything, every aspect of this movie, from the set decoration to the costuming to the acting to to just the story in general. It feels like a very immersive world that this movie pulls you into and asks you to just buy in. And once you're in, it's just this very, very... As as big as this ship is, God, it seems so claustrophobic. Oh, God. Everything seems so tight and like you're just part of this very, very tense situation with these poor, unfortunate souls stuck on this ship with with <laughs> with this thing. With a very friendly alien. <laughs> mm. it's, it's big and it's pissed. I don't know what else to say. I'm just like a baby. Like it became really big. Well, it used to. You grow, it grow up so fast, don't they, audience? They grow so fast. They grow up so and fast. And the skin was like nothing. <laughs> Kane, you just had to look inside that thing. You just had to go yeah, look in. You had to go just traipsing into the egg. See, again, white people. Stop going into <laughs> old stop going into old places with haunted relics. Stop going into crash spaceships on foreign planets. You don't need to go there. Should we get into some of the basic plot? Yeah, right? Koto wakes the crew up because he wants <laughs> to he really wants to make sure he's gonna get his bonus before they get back. <laughs> That's now our He just couldn't cannon. sleep. <laughs> if you watch the if you watch the watch walkthrough, I, I put up the idea that <laughs> Yafet Koto, who's is it Parker, really cares about his bonus situation for the, the ore mining that they're doing, decides to wake everyone up to talk about the bonus situation. Uh, before we dock. I think we ought to discuss the bonus situation. Right. Brett and I, we think we ought to, we deserve full shares. That's not really what happens. That's not really what happens. There's this big, it's long in the future, and there's this big ship with a crew of seven on it, and they're basically mining for minerals in deep space, and they're heading back to Earth. They're returning with all of their booty. In a very funny-looking ship. 
I mean, it made me think of Star Wars. Yeah, it's yeah. got like the four towers with the, the thing in the middle. You know what it reminds me of? You know how they put those weird like new little table things in the middle of pizza? Oh. When you order it, it's like <laughs> that upside down. That like little... But the <laughs> box doesn't like cave on the pizza. No, it's, I, the, ta- it's I, the table for the little mice that are going to eat the <laughs> pizza. For the roaches. <laughs> oh, Lord. But yeah. You're I know. right. It looks like an upside down table, but it's a big... It's a massive ship. It's like mm-hmm. maybe like the... Like you could fit a city of people in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But and there's only seven people in this. There's only seven people, and they're going. They're coming out of cryo sleep because their ship has received a communication that there's some unknown signal on a nearby planet named LV426 that they need to investigate. They work for this corporation called Wayland Utani, which is a funny name, to be perfectly honest with you. Have you seen a Alien versus Predator? Like they do something really funny with that at the end of it. Like Charles Bishop Wayland yeah. is like oh. in the first movie. Okay. And then at the end of the second movie, like government people like find the Predator tech and bring yeah. it to this lady. And they're like, hey, do you want this Miss Utani? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> but those aren't canon anymore. So cut this. Guess that, that, guess that never. <laughs> Wayland Utani is a corporation that's getting all the, the minerals that they're mining for and whatnot. You know, this big, you know, corporation on Earth. Because I'm sure Earth is just, you know. What it is now. It's probably it's probably <laughs> mined out. There's no more oil anywhere. The United States went and took it all. They have to go look for somewhere else. Yeah, they're working for the man. So originally the the idea was it was supposed to be kind of a English Japanese mega corporation and the original name was Leyland Toyota. Oh. <laughs> the Leyland Toyota Corporation. Oh no. <laughs> but I guess he I guess it didn't work. That's well, pretty funny. Yeah, they get woken up from cryo sleep and they're just like, well, I guess we are gotta do something. Some of them are like, all right, we're just going with flow and others are like, hey man, come on, I want to get paid first, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This leads to Parker, the main character who woke them all up, <laughs> exclaiming why he does not get his bonus until he gets back home. Not a rescue ship. Right. <laughs> it's not my contract to do this kind of duty. And what about the money? If you want to give me some money to do, I'd be happy to, you know, watch. Yeah, this guy's really concerned with the bonuses. He's going to bring this up like four or five times. These are so, like, like blue collar workers are like still very, you know, blue collar. <laughs> where's my, in where's the my money? Where's my money? Let's talk about the bonus hey, situation. Yo, you woke me up. I better, I got to get paid. Uh, Yafet Koto, who plays Parker, actually said that because they, he wanted tension between this man and Sigourney Weaver, who plays Ripley in this, Yafet Koto, he was like, you need to annoy her off camera. He told he told him to do it. And so I guess he was just being an asshole to, to Sigourney Weaver off camera. Wow. So that whenever she was like mad at him, she would be like, you fucking bastard. Fuck and, off. <laughs> and he was like, and he's like, I really regret that because he's like, Sigourney Weaver is actually pretty cool. Like, she didn't deserve that. No. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. But we get to meet our cast of characters as talked about. There's Yafet Koto as Parker. There's Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. Tom Skerritt's the captain. Dallas. At Dallas. And Bilbo Baggins is Ash. He's the science <laughs> officer. Nancy Cartwright as Lambert. The, yeah. the, the, the She's who we all are the, if we were in this situation. She's so scared in this movie. She's just so scared from the minute everything pops off. John Hurt as Kane. Yes. He's another crew member. And then there's Harry Dean Stanton as like, I don't know, he and Yafet Koda are like best buds. Yeah. Well, they, they want the bonuses together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're the mechanics, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So as the crew is flying through space, a friendly alien hitchhikes <laughs> and they decide to pick him up and they have a nice dinner with him. Then they drop him off at their destination and then they all get home safe. The real alien was the friends we made along <laughs> yeah. in space. I wish that was a movie you showed me. <laughs> <laughs> I was not ready. Interesting as well, Ridley Scott had two uh, actresses down for Ripley and it came down to like the final decision. One was Sigourney Weaver, and the other one was Meryl Streep. Cho- no possibly way. chosen, but unfortunately, he decided to go with Sigourney Weaver. Do you know why? No, why? Uh, Meryl Streep was mourning her then husband, or partner at the time. Do you remember who her partner was? Oh, John Cazale. John Cazale, Fredo, from, Fredo. The, from The Godfather. Who, what's his, what's, what's, what character does he play in Dog Day Afternoon? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> You never see Dog Day Afternoon? Fredo again. Huh? Oh, yes. I just know he's also in The Conversation and The Deer Hunter. Yeah, and yeah. I've seen those. I've just never seen Dog Day Afternoon. It's somewhere there's a parallel universe For where Meryl, Meryl Streep is, is Sigourney Weaver. I don't and, think Meryl, you know, Meryl Streep, Streep is, is Ripley and uh, 
Sigourney Weaver is in the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> that needs to be. Is that that's Meryl like, Streep, right? Put yeah. Photoshop. <laughs> so, yeah, if, you know, Photoshop that. So Sigourney Weaver in the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> Can you imagine Meryl Streep doing Alien Resurrection? Oh my God. Who do I have to fuck to get off this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm glad it's Sigourney Weaver. I'm just, I mean, I, I can't She's, see anyone. I can't she see. is. She is as we know her because of this movie now. Exactly. Yeah. I can't see anyone else as Ripley. And it's uh, so sweet that she did Ghostbusters too. <laughs> I know she's in Ghostbusters. I love her in Ghostbusters. <laughs> she's the she's the gatekeeper. Are you the key master? Not that I know no. of. <laughs> 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 Are you the key master? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is no Ripley, only alien. Only Zool. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, I, and uh, as we, like, as, as I kind of mentioned during the live stream as well, sci-fi uh, again allows for these like kind of like breakout roles for women, especially the, like at the time there wasn't a lot of like leading roles for women, especially in kind of forward things like like sci-fi and all that. But because sci-fi is always kind of doing the different, always pushing, and there's a fascination with the other and the alternate and kind of that like there's always these chances for these like crazy, crazy heroines to, to kind of step up. Like, as I talked about Sarah Connor or uh, Dana Scully or um, who's what's her face from uh, Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It's like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll accept that one as well. Erica, they get the notification that there's something on this planet. Yeah. They get a, they get a DM. DM really quick, says <laughs> like, yo, uh, Hey, yo, you up. Can you go check this out? <laughs> Can you deviate for like, <laughs> I don't know, just a little bit. Go check out. We this think life. there's something here. Life form. And uh, people are resistant. Why? Their bonus. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at first they don't know they're going to lose their bonus, but then they're told you're going to forfeit your shares. So okay. what are they? So what do they all decide to do? Go check it out. How do you feel about that decision? I think it was a terrible decision. <laughs> you're fired if you don't do this. I, I, it's I, like I, we're in space already. I'm just fucking coming home, man. Yeah. What are you going to do? I appreciate you when we were watching it together just saying, well, no, I'm not, you know, <laughs> like, how are they going to know? Who, how are they going to know? Let's just say, gotcha. let's just not and say we did. Yeah. Let's all yeah. just say we popped down there. There was nothing it's there. Seven yeah. people you have to convince to be on the same page. Not like 30. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you have seven. Can't people. take that long. Yeah. What a short movie. So they all decide against it and uh, just, you know, keep on trucking. They all home. fly home. Everyone makes it home. Jonesy lives happily ever after. Happy and no bonus. <laughs> and no sequels. <laughs> Alien is one of the nicest little short films I've ever seen. <laughs> so what do they have to do against their better judgment? You got to go down on this planet, LV-426. So three of them go and um, they all get in little cute spacesuits. And in the faraway shots, did you know that Ridley Scott like put like his kids and like younger kids in like little spacesuits to make the sets look bigger? Really? I did yeah. not know that. Oh, so my cool. sets look really, really big. Yeah, that makes sense. And they find a big horseshoe. <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> yeah, they find a uh, unidentified spacecraft or they're, they're pretty sure like it's it just looks like a spacecraft. It's a giant boomerang. <laughs> And um, they're like, okay, we're going to go in it. And we're all just like, why? <laughs> yeah, they like go inside of it. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, okay, check it out. And then they want to look at it more. Like, And the design of this ship is so cool. It all looks very bioorganic yeah. and whatnot. And it's just all black and uh, weirdly kind of slimy. It it all, it's slimy. all super shiny. Yeah, <laughs> Slimy kind of looks like you're... Do the hallways kind of look like you're traveling through like a spine or something? It looks <laughs> the like inside a pretty big of set, someone's though. spine. Yeah, the, like, the set looks massive. Yeah, I'm wondering like how big it actually was. They built some really big sets for this. Yeah, yeah. that horseshoe is real. Like they built all that. No, I'm kidding. Like oh. that, they didn't build. Yeah, they didn't build a big ass <laughs> spaceship on the outside. <laughs> I should have read my facts before coming. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You can see it at Universal Studios. And I, will, and I want it to fly. <laughs> oh, Mr. Scott. Uh, Mr. Scott. We don't have the technology <laughs> yet. No. Imagine some PA being like, Mr. Scott, we can't actually make the thing fly. <laughs> Mr. Scott, can you please like reconsider actually killing the actors? <laughs> <laughs> He's so, got the alien on a chain. Nobody <laughs> understands my vision. <laughs> They're advancing through the ship. What do they find in there, Erica? At least first, what do they find with the main control room? Uh, there's this like huge dead 
person, <laughs> alien thing. Like Just it a looks skeleton. like a skeleton of a person that's like double, triple their size or something like. That. But uh, what's wrong with it? It's, it's a um, big, it's a big blue man, it's blue a, man group, man. Yeah, it's, it's from the blue man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's big and dead, and it's got like it's it looks like it exploded from the inside, according to one of the other. People. It had a heart attack. It's got yeah. a hole punched in its chest, yeah. like it's actual through its rib cage. Like and, yeah, like Temple of Doom. What would be its rib cage if that thing was a you know like a human type of thing? Oh, you're saying he's not human? <laughs> well, that's the size of that. I don't think that was human. <laughs> What if it's just the Amazons from Futurama? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just huge snow, Death snow, by snow, snow, snow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what? Which, to be perfectly honest, is not that different from how these aliens function. To be perfectly honest with you, yeah. I mean, like, the, these they're essentially space uh, sexual predators <laughs> in this in this movie. I mean, that's what they are, right? Yeah. We 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 when they are that, bees out to repopulate, but that's in the second movie. And this one is just. One lone little young alien off to conquer the world by himself, <laughs> make his ancestors proud. Yeah, uh, reshoot this movie from the alien's perspective, where he's like having a coming of age tale. <laughs> the crew of the Nostromo arguing. <laughs> 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 That's going to be the title. Oh my god! <laughs> because then we'll see more of the what alien. A call and less of the crew. Our, what a callback to our first episode. I'm, oh glad my you, god. I'm glad you got that. Yeah, oh my god. So you're saying call it the crew of the alien arguing? The crew. But, the crew of the just Nostromo focus, Just focus on what the xenomorph is doing in the ducks. Like the for entire 35 time. minutes, it's just a still shot of him like. Waiting Chilling. in the ducks. <laughs> Every now and then he just kind of turns his big head. Just <laughs> do, you, do you hear the parts of the movie just like muffled from outside? <laughs> what about the bonus situation? <laughs> Shut the fuck up about the bonus. Oh my god. God damn it. It's just was like off to the side, just like, God damn it, Lambert, will you listen to me? Shut up! And then the alien just goes. <laughs> mm. He's back down. So, but they also find what one of the parts of the floor ripped up, right? Yeah, like um, there was like a hole, and they're like, "Hey guys, we should go deeper into here." And I'm so like, they, Why? so John Hurt nose yeah, dives so down who, the hole. Who, they send poor old John Hurt on a little. That line. motherfucker volunteered. He's like <laughs> yeah. way too brave in this movie. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "Hey, there's this hole here. We should keep inspecting." <laughs> And then he goes there and he's like, there's this mist here that's like blue and it's like a huge chamber, it looks like, kind of thing or whatever. It's looks like, like some a chamber of, of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> then secret. he starts talking in snake. Oh my God. Tongue. <laughs> yeah, then he slips on the slimy shit and he falls down and it looked like a sad fall. Like he looked like he could have actually kept standing, but he fell for some reason. He's like, oh, just easier to go down. That, um, so I wanted to also talk, do you know how within the mist there's like that blue light that mm -hmm. talks about like he's like oh it reacts when i talk to it and that blue light over whatever is under all that mist that was actually those lights were borrowed from the band the who no way who in the next sound stage i guess was testing out their next like show lights and stuff like that and i guess ridley scott ran over and was like hey can i borrow these really quick hold on <laughs> Oh <laughs> ran God, back and like uh, put them down and they were just like light shining through and they were like these lasers are really cool <laughs> uh, let's just play Bob O'Reilly every, Bob time, Reilly, every yeah. time John Hurt just like <laughs> gets a face hugger just like yeah, it's yeah, just, imagine, it's imagine. just freeze frames okay, as the I like face this, I like on this one. Face. it's just I, freeze frames <laughs> as the face huggers on his face it says Bob O'Reilly starts playing yep that's, that's me, me. <laughs> bet you're wondering how I got here that's even that's, I thought an even funnier scene instead of it attaching to his face where Bob O'Reilly starts it's him just falling into like the egg let's <laughs> even sadder. yep that's me falling in there oh but, my but, god yeah it turns out it's the face hugger narrating you're probably wondering how I got here. I, this guy just looks so fuckable. <laughs> what is under all the mist, Erica? Oh, there's eggs. Eggs. What are in the eggs? Aliens. <laughs> what do they look like? They look like uh, like flowers in a way, like like tulips or something. When tulips are closed. Right? Oh, the the actual eggs. Like yeah, the yeah. Eggs, they look kind of like tulips, and then um. When you open the egg, what what does it look like? It in was there? it was gross. It looked like um. It was like all like skin colored though. Like it was. It looked like the inside of. I always think it looks like kind of like the inside of like a heart or a stomach. Yeah. Like that's what I figure it would look like. Well, I, it, I thought it was its eyeball at first. Oh, when I okay. saw the outside of the egg. And then the alien just jumps out at his face. And then they're like, oh, injured now. <laughs> <laughs> like they went down and got him. Yeah. So, so surprisingly, no other eggs <laughs> hatched when they were down there. So something jumps out of the egg and attaches itself 
to John Hurt's face. Even though he's got a spacesuit on with, oh, the, it goes with straight, the helmet. It goes straight through it that yeah, spacesuit. So that little face hugger, which attaches to him, it was supposed to be painted green. <laughs> it was supposed to be green, but Dan O'Bannon, I guess, saw the like unfinished, you know, flesh colored one, and he was like, "Yeah, hey, wait, that's that's perfect. That's actually pretty good." And to be honest, I think if it was like green, it would have. I don't know what color green, even dark green. I probably think that like I can't imagine it green. Yeah, yeah light green doesn't work. I think it needs to just stay this like gross. Yeah, this gross skin, skin color. color that that works. That works. It makes so it all well. more unsettling. Yeah, like the tan look that it's got. Yeah, it's kind of. Ew! Why is it colored like us? Because <laughs> green could have been probably a difficult color to pull off too. Yeah. You, you know. The uh, the original cut of this movie. Before we move on, I think we can move on. But the original cut of this movie is three hours and like fifteen minutes. I would want to watch that. The the entire all the way through that like cutting and then they had to cut it down even more. I wonder what they would do in those other hour and fifteen minutes. It's just the alien show. It's the like alien running saying. around. <laughs> he just I can't find his way around. He's getting really mad. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that scene in Covenant where they keep tra- where it's just all the footage of them trapping the alien. He just keeps like <laughs> he just keeps stopping at the doors that close, and he's just like, <laughs> "Shut up, bitch!" Um, I think the movie builds tension really well, like the way that it holds certain shots and the sound and the music and like the. I this felt, movie fucks with you. Yeah, <laughs> like I felt, yeah. I felt. St- anxious like my anxiety was going and i'm like oh they're going out and he's doing this thing the the scene that i think really got me was when the face hugger was no longer on that dude's face oh. <laughs> i was like oh it's where'd gone the, where'd the spider go i was like no it's gone it's gone it's in the room why are you going in there this is like just leave the room locked and they could have like lived their lives happily like they could have just never gone back in that room and like i don't know like Send poor John Hurt out the window and just be like, "Sorry, man, you're you're. There's no way." Like Parker was in. He's the dead. Room. I don't think he. He's dead. Like, if they froze him, like if they did freeze him, right? Like, mm-hmm. would the alien have still hatched? Or I think they would have gotten. I think they would have gotten to Earth, and Earth would have had a very very quick uh, surprise. I do think they would have gotten the alien eventually, mm-hmm. but I, I do think everyone would be uh, really surprised very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> He goes up to his wife and family. Hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> horrible. Yeah. Like, I, the moment he started eating, I was like, oh, God. Because I've seen, you know, it's it's referenced a lot in a different yeah. places. Like, I'm a, it film, is. I'm a film person. Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, the bleh, like, thing coming out. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. So I think that scene really was as iconic as a lot of people think it to be and sh- share about that scene because it's, it's really, just like, yeah it's a really brutal he just, he, moment <laughs> I, I just start seeing him stack all that food i'm like okay so he's really hungry he's feeding like two. i gotta feed he's me. about to give birth <laughs> he's, he's he's eating for two <laughs> but i was also like does he not feed like i don't know but that's just like me with like non-movie logic right like sometimes i look at these kind of movies and i'm like what is the logic behind <laughs> doing this? But I'm like, oh yeah, it's a movie. They don't need any logic. Logic yeah. goes out the window. Like Ripley was like smart, right? She was like, hey guys, I don't know if we should do this. But they're like, nah, it's fine. It's fine. Ah, it's fine. Yeah, we've done this before. We've been mining <laughs> ores forever. Guess who lives? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And yeah. for, for shame for John Hurt too. He didn't even get to eat good food. All he was talking about has how he wanted good food in the oh. movie. And the last thing he ate was, was shit. I guess freeze dried spaghetti is what is what he was looking like when he was munching yeah. on. That, he, I think that's what made him like explode <laughs> just that. how bad it was yeah. the, the xenomorph was like no not again no oh. i don't want to eat that i'm coming out now yeah. oh man so that scene really stuck out to me i love that scene it's so scary perfect yeah. well done do you have a scene that you love uh i i think i think just the scene um i think a couple scenes near the end where she's just by herself trying to go through back through the ship with the flamethrower and just oh. like how it looks is there's just so much tension in in that scene and and how close it is to her like close the camera is and how close the xenomorph could be the alien mm-hmm. could be but they're just on her and with all the lights flashing it's just like overstimulation in a confined area and that yeah i think it's scary for just anyone it, because you can't really pick you can't really 
picture what's coming from where. No, I was like, I know this movie isn't done yet because like there's no wide happening here and it doesn't feel like she's done with whatever she's going through. Like that alien is in that ship with her. Is there like briefly in that shot when she does go in there, do you see the alien? Like, is there like a... Only maybe if you're... I think after a certain point, only if you're looking for him, you can tell where his head is. Yeah. (laughs) I don't even know if they pan over and see him. I've never really looked. No, not before... Not before... She starts like getting undressed and ready for the No, party. no, no. I yeah. mean like, but you know, as she's just like blasting off. Oh, I don't yeah. know if I've ever yeah. seen I don't know if I've ever seen poor boy in there hanging out. Yeah. Just or like, tried looking for him. I don't even know if I've tried looking for him, yeah. Yeah, I should like uh, I want to rewatch that part. Fra- of the yeah, movie. frames and just go through it and see. It's like there he is. Yeah. I see like, you. Because you don't see him, right? Because it blend he blended in really well. Yeah. And yeah, that part was really stressful because I'm like, oh man, this movie isn't done and she's off and she already blew everything up and she was fine and now she's not fine. Now she's not fine. He is an ugly son of a bitch too. He's really scary looking. Like, I don't want that thing near me, you know? Yeah. No. They emphasize Mm -hmm. so, like, horribly well how dangerous he is. Yeah. Because no one, (laughs) everyone who comes in contact with him just disappears or dies. (laughs) (laughs) Like, all these grown people. Because, can't like, defend themselves against the foot, this thing. Right? You had some blood when Parker and Lam- Lambert. My favorite scene personally is Ripley's reaction to, to finding Parker and Lambert. <laughs> you don't really see much of it, but her reaction's so like horrifyingly. It's just so realistically yeah. like traumatizing. And you're left to wonder what the hell she's looking at because you can't really see like. I think that's what gets me so much. It's like, I want to know, but I'm so glad you're not telling me. <laughs> so <laughs> thank less, you for less is more. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for, you know, pulling that off. Excellently movie. Excellent movie. Cause like your imagination will do so much more. You're wondering. Than like, you know, a movie I always think about when I think, when I see scenes like that is funny games. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And which we reviewed on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. And I think about how you just hear all the noises, right. Of that guy, like, shit out of that person yeah just like oh god like you they never show it but you can hear it and i think that things like that like are really yeah i i would rather deal with those two than this guy (laughs) (laughs) last thing i'll say and i'll say for this one of the readers summarized this when it was first being submitted for 20th century as jaws in space what do you think (laughs) i don't know man uh, some, this is, this some, is some a, similarity, yeah. This is scarier than Jaws. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, this is definitely scarier than Jaws. But I'd say that that tension is still there. They have like that tight shot. They have like the you barely see it too, right? Like, yeah. Because like, mm-hmm. like Jaws doesn't really show up all the time because, uh, well, that was like a just a problematic shark. <laughs> yeah, he's, the, a, he's a very human pissed off shark though. Yeah. That's a, that's a shark that holds a grudge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like like uh, the mechanical shark in Jaws, the alien just refused to work sometimes in this. It's like, <laughs> you know what? You're not getting me for this shot. Yeah. They had to, yeah, whenever he'd come out of his vent, that's when they were like, okay, he's out. Let's, <laughs> let's film him real let's quick. Film, let's film this, yeah. Mr. Scott, do we really need to sacrifice another member of the cast just, to the alien? Lure the bait out. <laughs> I just think the growth rate of that guy was just like insane. He, he becomes a big boy. He's eating his Wheaties. He's drinking his milk. Like, how did... He's eating his brains. He gets so big. He didn't like. Who did he eat to get that big? Because they launched Kane up. He's swole. He's just getting big. He just got big from hiding in the vents. That's just how the (laughs) that's just how the organisms grow. Hey, uh, the Nostromo used to have a rat problem, but all of a sudden they're gone now. (laughs) There were more cats than Josie. You didn't didn't think to look into it? (laughs) Oh man! Before the xenomorph got on. Let's move on to the facts section again. The facts section is real facts about the movie that I've researched. And Nick and Erica have never read these before, and they're going to take some time to read them live for you. And again, these are real facts with some other stuff included. Fact number one. Alien was released on May 25th, 1979 to a $3.5 million opening weekend. It earned a total of $60 million while in theaters, placing it at number 415 on the all-time inflation-adjusted domestic Bach placing it at number 415 on the all-time inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. Can you make that any longer? (laughs) Some of its competition in the summer of 79 included the Amityville Horror starring Jesus Christ! (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> if you've seen that one, you know exactly what they're talking about. Rocky II starring Carl Weathers, R.I.P. to Action Jackson. And finally, The Muppet Movie starring Mel Brooks, Frank Oz, Jim Henson, and anyone else who can make you laugh. Yep. I like, oh, I like that idea. The alien, but all of the crew is Muppets. <laughs> like, <laughs> the really alien much. looks the same, but all the crew Gonzo is Muppets. Gonzo can be the, the alien. <laughs> <laughs> <Gonzo>. <laughs> or you have the Swedish chef. He <laughs> keeps... <laughs> Gonzo, just, he's not, like... He's not killing the crew intentionally. He's just accidentally killing them, <laughs> oh! like with all of his stunts. <laughs> Kermit oh playing my Ripley. God. Just oh, no, Miss Piggy playing Ripley. <laughs> Kurt right. runs up to Gonzo. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> As knocks him out into, instead of harpooning him out to space, she just drop kicks him out the, out the door. Oh, <laughs> well, I want to talk about the bonus situation. <laughs> yeah, That's Fozzie. <laughs> Fozzie right there. Okay. Fact number two. Balaji Badeo regretted that no one can recognize him as the alien in the movie, but thinking back on Boris Karloff or Christopher Lee, who began their careers by playing grotesque monsters, he adds, the fact that I played the part of the alien, for me, that's good enough. Ridley Scott actually made sure Badeo did not take tea or lunch breaks with the rest of the cast so that their fear of the six foot ten dude in a slimy black suit would be genuine. That's right. So uh, Balaji Badeo is a Nigerian kind of uh, live performance artist. This is his only movie credit. He did this movie. He is six foot ten and huge. He's massive. Wow. <laughs> Biggest dude ever. So he so they would. He, they dressed him all up in it, and he would make sure he had to take his lunch separate, which, you know, must be a little bit alienating. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know better. Just face hugger. <laughs> but, yeah, so he so he did this movie, and he, he kind of looked back on it, and he's like, man, like, you know, Dracula, Christopher Lee, you know, you, you get to see their face mm -hmm. in this, and nobody's ever going to know me. And he's like, you know what? And he was like a couple of years later and he was like, you know what? It's enough for me. I'm I'm the alien like mm -hmm. that. Like I brought the foreign to life. after this. He would actually move back to Nigeria and open up a gallery. Uh, he just ran wow. a gallery until I think he died in like I was reading like 98, 99 at like 39. Oh, sickle, sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. Really, really sad. But he, again, I, I would say arguably deserves to be in the echelon of people that bring nightmares and horror monsters to life. And Balaji Badeo definitely did that to bring the scariest alien to ever exist on the silver screen to life. Everyone is now terrified of this thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like how he moves to in the suit just feels so unnatural. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that that thing is he's six foot ten in the suit, just standing. Oh, no wonder everyone's scared. That's really big. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the crew's just like, oh, there he is. Stands up, just. <laughs> <laughs> the little mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly where he's at. Yeah, the little mouth. Like, I'm Harry Dean seven. Stanton wasn't actually like looking at something Ridley Scott told him to. He was just staring at him. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> he's just staring God. at his face, just like. You're huge. Uh, I can imagine him just like looking back at Harry Dean Stanton, just kind of like. What? <laughs> Before it cuts to the alien opening its mouth. Yeah. I can't imagine the process of getting in that suit. I heard I think it took a while, yeah. yeah. There's all that like things to go to the bathroom. Get gotta... all slimy and get all gross and Ooh, slimy in no. it. There's R that rub uh, yourself in the KY jelly. <laughs> there's that funny deleted scene of him crawling towards Lambert, but it yeah. looks but it looks kind of adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he just looks like a toddler like crawling like yeah. on, like <laughs> Very, crawling on his butt. Yeah. Like, it's cool to... Oh, hey, Lambert, look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Why? What are, you, what are you so scared of? <laughs> Fact number three, Ridley Scott and producer Walter Hill had very little horror experience and knowledge prior to filming, but were advised by Danny O'Bannon to watch The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. Both Scott and Hill were stunned after watching the horror movie, using it to ratchet up the intensity of their own movie. Saying, quote, who the bitch now, Toby Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't actually say that. But oh, who was I was going to say. <laughs> that <laughs> would be crazy. But they, they, and then Toby Hooper's like, I'll show you. I'll makes, show you. And makes Texas Chainsaw 2. <laughs> it's like, you just proved our point. <laughs> I'm going to get, uh, what is it? Flat Top Chrome Dome? Is it, what are they called? Chop Top. Chop Top, my bad. Music is my life. <laughs> That's... <laughs> 
Let's put him up against the alien. He'll oh, give yeah. the alien a run for its money. The alien is like, what the fuck is this? The same Why thing. does he keep scratching his skull? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I have a feeling it, it, I will probably not be watching the movie. But they <laughs> did just come out, um, a pinball company, uh, not the one that has yeah. an alien, a new pin, a different pinball company came out with um, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre oh, themed pinball machine. Nice. Yeah. But it's dual themed, so um, it's the same layout. Okay. Um, but it's got two themes. One theme is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then the other one is uh, Looney Tunes. Nice. <laughs> wow, so, that's pretty cool. They're the same layout, um, but they have two different design teams, so the rules for the games are completely different, but they have the same layout. So in the middle, there's the chainsaw guy that spins, and then on Looney Tunes, it's uh, Taz. <laughs> funny. It's, awesome. it's Leatherface running, and then you just hear suffering suck a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sure, uh, yeah, but uh, there's the... Uh, that game so the killer yeah. season duck pam, season yeah pam walks into the the room of bones and just you just hear leatherface yell turn out those lights <laughs> <laughs> just turns out the lights runs out i don't know if I, i've seen bits and pieces from that movie and that's just like too much for me i think i think alien was a is a good a good uh, one a good stopping so, point so so i think um the funniest thing to do to you next is make you watch Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But Texas Chainsaw, obviously, super intense, has a lot of like holding shots. And we kind of talked about how like the exploitation Texas Chainsaw just likes to hold on this poor girl just suffering through like a night of just complete hell and doesn't feel the need to cut away. And you get stuck in these very awkward scenes with, you know, all of these different it's characters very, stuck in a room together. It's just, so like, fun. It is. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> if you're it's a like sadist, <laughs> but it, th I find it very interesting that they use Toby Hoover's uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre to just be like, all right, we need to push the boundary of like sci-fi horror. And you know, shout out to uh, Toby Hooper for helping, you know, uh, push that forward, and Dan O'Bannon for recommending it. As you know, Dan O'Bannon being the screenwriter of this movie, but being a big into horror um, himself. Yeah, for I that. mean, a lot of shots. Yeah. And then they stayed. And then I'm like, oh, my anxiety would just like rise. Yeah. I'm like, just show it to me already. Just show it. That's no, funny. no, I, no. You haven't like, earned it. Oh, You're going to have to keep watching. I know. And then, and then it wouldn't show. And then I'd be like, no, that means it's going to show later. And I need it to show now because I was ready for what, it to show now. What did you jump like the highest at? Yeah, in this movie. Uh, probably the first jump scare. Oh, the face hugger. But I think if I think I freaked out more when just that panel fell. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> when when they're looking for the, the little fake thing. out. Yeah, but no, I mean, I think with um, you jumped whenever the cat jumped. The cat jumped, but also <laughs> what's his name? He went with the flamethrower. Oh, Dallas into the vent. Yeah, Dallas in the Dude, vent. That I one think, kills anybody I, who I think, ever watches yes, this movie. I that still that, scares me. Yeah. That scene is just. Everybody hates that part. Yeah, that that really got me because I don't remember. I was like, Ugh. nobody <laughs> nobody remembers quite where it is, but we know it's happening. Mm, yeah. We know it's about to because happen. Because every shot, just like, when, wait, is it, wait, when is it? And you're just kind of waiting, and you're like, I don't think. Oh shit! I know why. It's because every shot looks too similar. Yeah, and you're just waiting because you're just like, okay, I can't really pick up on like when it's going to come because yeah, yeah, and then Lambert's just like. No, it's in your area. Get out of there. And I'm like, get out. <laughs> get out of there. And then I'm like, why are you moving in that way? Like, he was only facing one way, but he totally had behind him open. And I'm like, what are you doing? Get out of there. It's just really stressful. It was the part that did make me like be like, Mom, Dad, I'm going to sleep with you tonight. Yes. <laughs> and um, when I watched the making of, because again, they spoiled the movie in the making of. I yeah. saw all these scenes and they still really frightened me. And um, I remember feeling physically ill watching that. After watching that making of, I was like actually really, really, really afraid to be alone I, after that. I think I would be a different person today if I watched that as a kid. <laughs> you'd be so into horror like right now. No. <laughs> like you'd be like hell you, like. You'd have, you know what you'd have? A podcast like this. <laughs> <laughs> so consider yourself lucky. <laughs> you have fun pinball. We just talk about bat really fucked up movies and go, ah, let's see who wants to hear yeah. this. <laughs> so we are on to the what is story mark. This again is the most interesting or craziest fact I found about the movie and wrote down and in the vein of our hero Tommy Wiseau <laughs> what a story mark Erica is going to read it and rate it from one to five marks one being the best lowest mark and one five being the best mark HR Geiger was tasked with creating and designing the look of the aliens based on the original designs from his book the necro 
Comic Con. Comic Con. <laughs> Keep going. Honestly, it's funnier. Necromicon. Yeah. It was never meant for the world. The necromancer. <laughs> um, based on this book, what I Necro the Necronomicon. Okay, that. Um, <laughs> choosing to give them an erotic look by including both. Was that penile? penile and penile. <laughs> yep. I did not preview this. Choosing to give them an erotic look by including both penile and vaginal elements in the design of the xenomorphs. His designs would influence all subsequent alien sequels and would successfully sue 20th Century Fox 18 years later over his lack of screen credit on Alien Resurrection that came out in 1997. Who would have guessed the guy who designed dicks would be a dick himself? <laughs> <laughs> So this is a true this is a true story. He he designed it and it's very clear in his work that there's elements of both male and female reproductive in in the xenomorph in the ship and everything. But it was based on designs he worked on on his like Necronomicon like book that he created like the art specifically. And I guess when Ridley Scott and uh, a couple of the others, you know, producers were looking at, you know, pulling him in, uh Fox was like no, I don't know if we can do this. And Ridley Scott was like, you either get this guy or we just don't do the movie. Like, get this guy. Yeah. Like, they, you need to get this guy for the movie. And you know, it's very clear. I mean, it's very clear. In, like, and they said no, it. and there was no movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Alternate universe. Yeah. Interesting that he would be like that. It's funny because there's a, there's a pinball artist mm -hmm. that does a very similar thing in all of his art, and I didn't realize it until I heard it on another pinball Oh, podcast. okay. Yeah, just the penile and vaginal elements. <laughs> <It's> in, <laughs> I mean, um, they're in all of them. I mean, they are. They are I just, like how we're very juvenile about saying that. I actually didn't think about it really until now. Like the most sexual thing I thought during the whole movie, I was like, oh, okay, Sigourney Weaver is taking off her clothes. Like, yeah. We see your butt crack for like 30, 30 minutes or whatever. No, I'm just kidding. Well, even, <laughs> 30 even, whole minutes. 30 whole minutes. This is what I'm just kidding. <laughs> even in that. That's where that's the three hour 15 version. <laughs> I see it now with the way that that face hugger was choking his face mm -hmm. and the way that he had like the thing going down his throat. Right. And just like, yikes. Everything it does is very, unfortunately, pen pen penetrative. Yeah. yeah. Even, even the little mouth, the little mouth that comes out, the fact that its head is like so shaped like the top, you know, yeah. and that it's, it's uh, very involved. Now I do have to ask. Out of one to five mocks, what would you rate this? One being not that cool of a fact, not one, just one mark, or five being a good mark. So good mark story. Um, What's gonna, a story mock? I'm going to give this a three. Okay, three out of five mocks. Oh, you're good. strict too. Yeah, <laughs> just like me. <laughs> I mean, like, it's 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 a cool fact, I guess, but for me, it just doesn't hit home with me. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. I thought, fair enough. I'm, I'm glad. I am thinking about it now, though, but that's just like. Like, it's a little more prevalent in aliens yeah. too. Yeah, you see it a little bit more. There's, a, there's that yeah. line too of "Don't touch anything." You know? Yeah, it's like the it's dry, and it's even slime. it's even like slimier. Oh, yeah, maybe it's a, four. <laughs> it's a four. Yay! We get one. I get one more. But yeah, I guess he sued. I guess he sued him for getting not credit on Alien Resurrection as well. He's like those bastards. <laughs> but I mean, I'm glad he got his money. Uh, but this does have a franchise. Uh, have. <laughs> You've seen all of them, right? I've seen most. I haven't seen all the AVPs. I think I've seen AV Alien. That's no, okay. Part. There's only two. Okay, I've seen one. <laughs> <laughs> there's because um, there's famously Aliens, which a lot of people consider superior to this. I, it's just as good. It's just a different movie. That's why it's good. It's a different movie. It's a good sequel. Does what, absolutely does what a really good sequel uh, should do. Yep. It's Alien Three does what a bad sequel should <laughs> should do. <laughs> does do. <laughs> And also Alien Alien 3 is also where they started implementing like primitive CGI. You remember that? He looks pretty funny. It looks pretty funny. Like it's just not. Oh, man. It just it didn't do well. Alien Resurrection come after that. And that one's weird, but it's funny. I like that one, though. Then AVP, AVP 2. And then Ridley Scott came back to the franchise to take a piss all over his legacy <laughs> oh. with Prometheus and Alien Covenant. I'm sorry, but they're just not good. Then, yeah, Alien Covenant just. Uh, I, my favorite part was like the the blood floor scene in Alien Covenant, where people keep slipping on the blood floor. Do you remember? Oh, that? you mean when it becomes a comedy slapstick comedy? <laughs> I, I'll say this: there's watchability to all of them. If yes. you're gonna experience them, check them all out. There's not a single one where there's not really a single Halloween Resurrection. You know what I yeah. mean? Where it's just like, no, that one 
you really don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're all worth checking out because some people get more out of the ones that I don't care for. Sure. Um, yeah, inform your own opinion. Exactly. Yeah. There's never really any... Uh, it's not like the Amityville movies where it's like, oh, no, you don't have to watch most of these. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to watch any of them, to be perfectly honest, for Amityville. I don't, you don't even have to see one. Maybe that's cool. a bad comparison. Yeah, that's not a good comparison. <laughs> each alien movie is unique in its own way because they each do each have different directors to yes. them and different ideas, even though some of them, you know, fall... I don't know, kind of fall short. Yeah. A lot of the... I mean, creativity of the first two. Yeah, Jam I mean, James Cameron did two, and it's just action sci-fi movie. It's not really horror anymore. It's like Beloved. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's just like, it's not horror. It's just action sci-fi, and it's a lot of fun. Game over, man. Game over. I, I you Mostly know, check, come out at night, mostly. Check out, uh, <laughs> check them all out. There's a new one coming out, so we're very excited for it, especially... I'm excited for we it. We all have hope. We Fede all have Alvarez hope. Alvarez is behind it, and I'm oh, like, really? oh, if anything else, it's just going to be fucking gory <laughs> <laughs> erica as always we we'd rate it ourselves but we wanted to also give you the honorary rating so honorary rating one out of 100 100 being good zero being bad and final thoughts about the movie what you think oh man one out of 100 for this movie well it's definitely not a one um, fair, fair even though i it's a two it's a, yeah <laughs> yeah um even though i'm not super into horror movies this movie was really like um really great as a sci-fi and yeah. effective it, it, effective yeah i was scared i was engaged i felt like i wasn't like okay i'm like whatever the monster's gonna come out and be like i i i was legit like okay like please like stop this tension <laughs> i'm like i'm done with this i want you to show the scary thing so i can go back <laughs> to like a normal position um i want to give this movie uh probably a 90 out of 100 90 wow. out of 100 thanks erica yeah, nice that a. rocks nice what are you you're right? a fan bro no, yeah very good what would uh, you give this i actually with her i'm like 90 90 out of 100 i, I gotta respect that was my one too i'm gonna go 90 out of 100 for this movie this movie i, I mean hang on we'll save that we'll save that for the final thing but mm -hmm. what's your what's your rating 86 86 this is really good this is really chilling and uh this is hands down top five scariest movies i've ever seen 90 plus 86 divided by two is an 88 88 for alien one from 1979 I think we can both agree this is pretty much a staple of horror. You need to see this and a staple of sci-fi yeah. in general. If you love any of the uh, the types of like alternate, you know, the other very focusing on other life forms and just horror aspects, this has got to be something you see on your own. If you haven't seen it, we cannot highly recommend it enough. And my God, is it just intense and it makes you feel claustrophobic and turn all the lights down and maybe watch it when it's dark. What do you think, Erica? I would, uh, if you are a scaredy cat <laughs> like me, um, watching it in the daytime was the best thing I could have done for myself. And I'm glad that I can like watch a few other things before I go to bed tonight. Don't worry. We'll make sure it's night when we do Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, God. <laughs> Nick, any final thoughts? Watch this because it's so, it's so fun to get scared with this movie. Absolutely. This movie plays you so well. And, uh. I can't think of a, another movie right now that has so many imitators. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is referenced so many times, Steven, even in Spaceballs. Well, not just referenced. Yeah, I just mean like movies. A lot of sci-fi movies just fought, took this formula. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely yeah, I can did. see that. I have a rating system that we'll be doing. Oh, okay. Go ahead. For my um, thing. And um, yeah, I'm interested because I just gave it a 90, right? Yeah. But maybe based off of my scorecard that I have made for movie versus pinball machine. Sure. Maybe just give it I that score low. I might score it lower. Oh, okay. Okay. So, cause like right now I'm thinking like, I just watched the movie. I'm on that movie high. I'm like, yeah, actually I liked all the elements. I, I was scared. Like I, it, it got me like tense. I wasn't like, Oh, I'm not engaged in this. Like I, um, and I liked a lot of the practicals. I think the set design was amazing. Like visually the movie was really well done. And nice. um, Nick had me watch Halloween um, a little while ago, and it had those shots that just stay forever, and they just keep going. And you're like, please just show the dude. <laughs> and I felt like that with this movie, too. I was like, wow, these, like, long pans yeah. and these long, like, shots. The and, alien's like, just a dude, too, you know? <laughs> just show the yeah. dude. Show the dude. Just show the dude. And, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, Jonesy, though, was also really great getting to see. The that was a good cat Jonesy. actor. Shout out, shout good, out to Jonesy, a good cat. four cat actors. 
So I have only eight categories. I wanted to score this out of 100, but okay. I, I have a score out of 80 because um, I'm thinking everything is worth the same value. I This is my first time doing this movie versus a pinball machine. So, you know, if the audience, if you guys feel like one of these um, aspects that I'm having us rate on deserves more than a point towards, you know, uh, that category, then sure, I'm I'm willing to change it. This nice. is a, you know, first time doing it. Uh, at least we're recording now. This is the first time. I might do another one before this one comes out. So sure. we'll see. Right on. Um, but the things that we're gonna rate the movie on the pinball machine off of right now. Uh, the only thing that is different between the movie and the pinball machine uh, mm -hmm. rating scale is plot. Um, because for the movie, we'll rate the plot, and then on the pinball machine, we'll rate the gameplay. So Fair enough. That's the only thing that's different. Otherwise, that makes sense. all the rest of the categories are the same. The first category is visual appeal. Uh, one out of ten. Mm, one out of ten. Uh, I'm giving it a nine. It's a gorgeous looking movie. Yeah. Every uh, cinematography wise, um, they what you said was great. It, it, all the parts of the ship look different, but they all manage to make you feel like it's all the same, all part of the same place. I, I'm going to give it a 10. I agree with everything Nick said, and I think it's just easier. 10. 10. 10. One of the best looking movies I've ever seen. Let's go. All right. Now the next thing is plot. One out of 10. I'll give it a, I'll give it an eight. I, I think it's a, I think it's a fun plot. It makes a lot of sense. I, I'm sure there could be a little bit more of a, you know, a different twist or something maybe you can add, but as a basic plot, per perfect. I give it an eight. I like its simplicity too. So I'm going to give it a nine. Nine. It's just uh, less is more. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It and it raises some questions, but you know, after not be not in a way that it's like, no, the movie doesn't make any sense if you don't answer them. No, I think I would give it like an like an eight or a seven point five. Or there something you go. Like nice. That. But um, for visual appeal, I realized I didn't rate that one. But for visual appeal, I think I would give it. Um, I want to. Oh, it's my stomach. Sorry about that. So good. <laughs> I heard it. I was like, oh. I was like, wow. There goes the Coca Cola. Um, for visual appeal, I would give it, I want to, I want to say that it's a nine for visual appeal for me too, because like the set design mm -hmm. was really great. They had a lot of practical lighting and like, I can, I can really appreciate that kind of art and kind of work. Cause I know what it takes to do it. Like I've been on set, like I've, I've worked yeah. in that environment. So I think I, I don't know, I see it in that way. What would you rate the sounds from the movie? One to 10. We watched this on my surround sound system. Yeah. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, I I, uh, I mean, personally, I think the second one has better sound, at least for me personally. But also, this isn't bad, so I'm going to go ahead and give it another eight. I'm going to give this a seven. Nice. I think the sounds are really good, too, because I, I even like the computer noise is like, yeah, you know, like those little that the, analog sounds. Yeah, yes. like everything. Um, I'll give it uh, I want to give it an eight. Cool. Nice. Uh, my next one is music. On a scale of one to ten, how did you feel? Like I have it? a bigger appreciation for the score in this, yeah, than I used to. Um, it popped a lot more for me. So props to Jerry Goldsmith. The score gets a nine for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I'm going to hit it with an eight as well. I like it very well. It's not well just horror themed. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of everything in there. Mystic, you know, kind of like mystery, <laughs> grand sci grand sci fi as drama. Well. Like sadness and mm -hmm. just kind of melancholy too. Yeah. Uh, tiredness and just kind of weariness as well, yeah. especially with, you know, that theme of them just kind of being out in open space. No, I, I'd give it a, a, a nine, I guess. I think that it was good music. Uh, now, on a scale of one to 10, the engagement, how engaged do you feel? Oh, I was like into it, man. It's a 10. 10. 10. Drew me both, in, both Drew me in 10. this time. 10. That, that doesn't need to say much. Watch it yourself and you'll see why. Yeah, I would say, oh, man. Because of me being scared, I feel like it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense if I also didn't give it a ten for engagement. Fair enough. Like, <laughs> I like. I mean, I didn't. Shit I'm my glad pants, you got into it. So yeah. that was a that's a win. Not that I do that often. Like I feel like I'm, I'm sorry. I've said it a few times now, but it's just like I'm just glad that I didn't. You know? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a little awkward. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not at home. I'm not like in the comfort of my own zone yeah. <laughs> to be scared. So. Um, whatever goes goes. Um, I bought extra pair. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to creativity on a scale of one to 10, Ooh, I'm going to give that an eight. That's, that's, uh, they mm -hmm. came up, they came up with some, they came up with a great monster and a great lore too, especially yeah. when you watch uh, some of the sequels, but 
again, that's where all the mystery comes from. You're just kind of left to figure it all out on your own. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, is this correct? It could be, but I'm going to go with it anyway. So I think that's uh, forcing us to kind of fill in the gaps of creativity. That's clever. Yeah, I, I give it a nine as well. I like that this just like drops you in and just like, yep, this is what we're doing. And we're instead of trying to give you all the backstory, we're just going to build the world around you and here's this focus thing on that. deal with yeah. it yeah. <laughs> and just build the ship build the ship build the world build this alien around and mm -hmm. that's that's creative in my opinion yeah i have to think back because i'm like there's so many things that like you were saying nick that copy this formula and copy this so for me i guess like it feel i know that that was like what came out first right but the creativity i'm like oh i've kind of seen some of this before <laughs> but I have to think back like, okay, during that time period when movies were coming out, yeah, this was like, nobody had seen something like this before. Yeah. It was like groundbreaking. It wasn't like this was overdone. Um, so for creativity for its time, definitely, um, yeah, I want to, I want to give it like a, like an eight. Now the replay value, what do you rate that out of one out of 10? Would you watch this movie again? I mean, you just did, but <laughs> would you like. How would you? How often would you replay this movie? Like how often? Would you watch this again? <laughs> there we go. Oh, I don't know. It's scary. I, I think I think for me and maybe we can all agree with it. Like this is something that I feel like I've seen it. I've seen it now like four to five times. And one of the times I really wanted to see it. Most times I want to see it is when nobody's seen it or. You know, uh, it's coming and like showing in like a theater with like an original print. But is this something that's easy to just sit down and have a nice watch? No, uh, <laughs> this this is something that like takes time and just be like, OK, I'm going to watch Alien for watchability or rewatchability, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say five, five. I, I mean, there's times to do it. I'm all down to watch it again, especially in theaters. Love it. But this is this is a hard one to sit through. <laughs> I'm personally going to give it an eight out of rewatchability because I haven't seen this in theaters yet and I want to. There you go. OK, fair enough. I'm going to give it a three because I could see myself <laughs> potentially watching it again, like in like five years. Be like, oh, yeah, alien. Oh, no, alien. Mm, Click it off. <laughs> yeah. Well, like maybe with the new one coming out, I could be like, oh, like what was the first one like again? You know, mm. like I, I, I could see myself maybe doing that. But, you know, I. I'm seeing it once feels good. And maybe the second time I watch it would just be like for science or something. For science. <laughs> be like, oh yeah, this thing. Now my last question or my last category is overall enjoyment. What would you rate it out of one to ten? Nine. Very enjoyable. This is something, like I said, rewatchability, I don't do it so often. And but but anytime somebody says Oh, I'd be interested in seeing Alien. I haven't seen it. Would you like to watch it again? My main reaction is like, of course. Like, I would love to watch this with you. Like, again, even I enjoy seeing this multiple times. And I've shown it to a, two or three people and then, you know, gotten to see it in theaters. I'm going to go ahead and give this a 10. Like, overall, Ooh. like, enjoyment and that. Yeah. It's got to be a 10. Overall enjoyment? I, I don't know if I was incredibly enjoyed, but I can <laughs> appreciate the art that it is. And I'd yeah. say... I want to give it a nine because I'm thinking of that 90 scale. But like, if I think about it, like, was I <laughs> enjoying myself? Yes. I, I was a bit scared. So I'm going to give it an eight. Okay, fair enough. But mm -hmm. I want to give it, an, I, I want to give it a nine, but because. You're scared of the aliens. Because I'm so you're going to give it a higher rate. <sighs> but you know, there are other films where I feel like I'm scared <laughs> or I'm mad at characters. No, that's not fair. Okay. I'm going to give it a nine to, uh, to fair match enough. my 90. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, nine, yeah, she's looking ahead. at you. <laughs> oh yeah she's judging me all right i see that this is our final part of this episode we usually play like a fun game at the end just to end it sometimes will i let nick in the club uh sometimes <laughs> it's chat gpt or random chat gpt bullshit or real story from a from a established piece of media this one i thought would be good because it's a movie not this movie but a movie that i both know you would know this one's called explain a film plot badly so i'm just gonna explain the film plot of a movie you both know pretty terribly and first one to get it just gets the point, and that's it. Sweet. All right. Let's do it. This is the plot of the film. Religious monk convinces teenager to commit acts of terrorism. Bulletproof monk. No. Uh, is it Karate Kid? No. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> After pupil? No. <laughs> uh, that's not a monk. Well, There's a kid in a Nazi den. Buffy there. the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> no. A religious monk convinces a teenager to commit acts of terrorism. Yep. Are you sure I know this? 
I think you do. I, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you do. You mm. may not, but I, I'm pretty sure it's a very popular movie. Is it on this like table here? I there's something I guarantee there's something in this room that has the title of the movie on it. I don't know if it's these because I can't see all of the ones in front. Mm, that's uh. So, so it's Die Hard. Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> like the poster right Not there. quite. Obviously, it's The Office. It's it's uh it's closer than you think, Erica. Actually, Paul Blart Mall. <laughs> A religious monk gets a teenager to commit acts of terrorism? Yeah, convinces teenager to commit acts of terrorism. Ooh. Is this um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No. Because <laughs> there's a, there is. You're, 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 thinking, you're thinking too realistic. I tried to channel What's your a, ang- like, Raphael. What genre, what genre is this? It, it, it is also a sci-fi. Oh, it's a sci-fi. It's big and grandiose. Oh, is it Star Wars? It's Star Wars. <laughs> Erica got it. There you go. It's Star Wars. <laughs> Yoda. And, okay. Your oh. descriptions are from funny. A, from a certain point of view... All of those people in the Death Star, Luke, are part of the problem, those fucking Nazis. <laughs> That's no moon. Fascist wow. pigs. That really is a bad... <laughs> That's no moon. That's the man. <laughs> oh, man. Let's stick good. it to your father. My what? No, I mean I mean the, 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 the Empire. Are you angry at your father? <laughs> Thank you for watching us. Don't forget to follow us, rate us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at one and a half white guys podcast on TikTok at one and a half white guys. And now streaming on our YouTube, which is hopefully where you're watching this at one and a half white guys. And if you want to watch the other part of this series, be sure to check out us playing the pinball machine with Erica on her channel. You want to go ahead and plug that? Yeah. So on my channel, Erica's Pinball Journey, I'm going to have these two lovely gentlemen play the alien pinball machine and they're going to rate it just kind of like we rated the movie. So you'll be able to see their scores match up based off of what they rated the movie and what they rated the pinball machine. Whoa. So, yeah, it'll be really exciting. Very excited for that. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we sort of talk about that movie. We kind of talk about the movie. Erica, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. We're so happy to have you on. And then, you know, if this works, we well, would love to have you back on sometime. What do you think? Thanks for doing this, man. Absolutely. We appreciate it. You're, all, you're welcome anytime. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, we'll see you next time. And remember, stay off of alien planets. We're not going there anymore. Do not land. Do not go stick your face in an egg. We're not doing it anymore. Again, let's not and say we did. (laughs) Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye. And transmission.